Welcome to Wesley Impact. It's great to have you join us during Holy Week. Good Friday is so important to all Christians. It represents the giving of God's love in Jesus Christ. In the death of Christ, we have a key and way into life. This day says we cannot save ourselves. It's a gift of God's love for all of us. In my thought for today, I'm going to be naturally reflecting upon Good Friday. We'll take a look at Wesley Mission's work to help the homeless. And we meet the rector of St. James Church, King Street in the heart of Sydney, as he talks with me a little bit about Good Friday. Andrew Semple, it's good to have you here on the show. Good to be here, Keith. Thank you. Look, let, me, let me get right to the heart of the question. Ask, what does Good Friday mean to you? Good Friday is a turning point. I, I, we, we can try and bring a lot of things into Good Friday, but I see it as a turning point in the history of humanity and God. And at that turning point, we look back to creation, uh, where the experiences of humanity growing, developing, as the stories tell us. And, uh, and then at the creation story, of course, human beings decide to go their own way. They get this moral knowledge because they eat of the, the, the tree of the fruit of knowledge. And so they're cast out of the garden. And then you have these wanderings going on right through the Old Testament up to the coming of Jesus. And God breaks into the world mm. to turn it all around again. And, and so essentially through Good Friday and Easter, where we were cast out of the garden of peace and goodwill, the door is opened again. Mm. We can return into that place where God intended us to live. So that's the message. It, it, it is, it is world-changing. Andrew, uh, Wesley Mission, we'll be doing our thing on Good Friday. We'll be marching through the street. I suspect for you, from the tradition that you belong to, it will be a week of special services. It is. From, from Palm Sunday through to Easter Day, we have a series of events. We call them uh, often in terms of processions because we're moving from one thing to another. So uh, Palm Sunday, we have a procession around. We start out in Queen Square and we process around with our palms, mm -hmm. enter into to the church and it's all very triumphal and, and uh, singing and, and, and then we come into the church and then everything changes. We, we hear the passion narrative, the story of the death of Jesus on the cross and we enter into this mood for the rest of the week of reflection and thinking about uh, that last period of, of Jesus's life, his ministry, uh, through to, say, Maundy Thursday, where we have the thanksgiving for the, the, the Holy Communion uh, through the, the Last Supper, the foot washing, mm. and then we enter to Good Friday. Mm. And Good Friday becomes that, that turning point then mm. as mm. we approach the death of Jesus, we reflect on what that death means for us. Of course, with the knowledge that we're heading to Easter Day and resurrection. Uh, so we, we, we know where we're going, but we have to pause. We actually have to think about what does this mean for us? And pause is a good word because that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to be back with Andrew and his story a, a little later in the show. But I'd like now to introduce you to today's performer. Sancho Prowse is a regular uh, on the show. She's a speech, singing and vocal instructor in Sydney. And she's chosen a song that highlights Jesus' overwhelming sacrifice. Here's Sancho singing, I stand amazed in the presence.
commemorate 200 years of faith and pioneering care in Australia, Wesley Mission has released a publication documenting its work in the community. Everyone needs a little rest. Everyone needs a little joy. For more information on Today's People, Today's Story, you can contact us on 02 or email us at impacttv at wesleymission.org.au. And if you'd like to know more about Sancha, her details are going to be on our website all this week. I'm continuing conversation with Andrew uh, Semple. Um, Good Friday, we stopped to consider the meaning of, of the cross. What, what in all of the story of the cross matters most to you? I suppose there's a couple of themes. Sacrifice is obviously one, uh, but sacrifice for what purpose? Uh, I tend to look at, at, at Good Friday as this is what humanity does to God when God comes into the world as a human being. Uh, and our desire is, is, is to have sacrifice. Mm. Uh, but God's desire is to move on from this uh, and to have new life. And so the message is really one of, this is all coming to an end. This, this need to try and get right with God through doing things to get God's attention is not necessary. And, and so Easter Day, when we get to that, that is God, God's response to humanity's action on Good Friday. So there's a sense on Good Friday, I, I find, that we weep for the brokenness of humanity because this is what human beings do to someone who is ultimately good and righteous. Andrew, I often ask somebody on Good Friday a little of their own story. When you follow Christ in the very beginning and you think about calling, somebody tells you to get a life, don't they? Oh, uh, yes. What, what, what was that all about? A, a very good message, actually, at the time. Uh, I grew up in a Christian family. I understood uh, the presence of Christ in my life. My mother was very formative in, in all of that. And, and as I, I, I grew... I, I, through that, I, I entertained the possibility of ministry. And I talked to a few people when I was a teenager about to leave school and uh, my father gave me some very good advice. Well, this is just one of the occasions, but he said, really, you need to go and get a life. You need to go out and experience the world before you have anything to bring to people in their, their needs and their beliefs. So it was a good advice, but it, it also was a good cop out at the time. So mm. I forgot about it and got on with life and did other things. But Andrew, we know each other a little bit and I know that uh, you would have the kind of perspective that I would, that, that ministry is not just for people who are respectable and, and to, mm. that we should reach to people on yeah. the margins, on the... Would you like to respond to that? Well, I, th I think it, it, at St James, it's, it's certainly a reality. Um, there's not many people live in our parish except for the homeless mm. or the very rich who live down at Circular That's Coon. an interesting take in itself, isn't in, it? Indeed. Mm. We, we have this huge diversity between peoples that live in the area. And so the ministry of the homeless people who sleep all around the church... Uh, the Sister Freedom Mission, where we provide meals to, to homeless people on Sunday. Uh, the engagement with them is an important part of that ministry. And, and, and the importance to say that God's message of hope and love is for everybody. Mm. It, it, there are no distinctions. Mm. And I think that's wonderful when we see homeless people coming to church on Sunday, mm. coming and participating in the life of the community, to see the governor sitting at one end of the pew and a homeless person sitting at the other, and that's church. Mm. Look, what in your mind would be the message of hope for Good Friday? Well, I, I suppose the message of hope for me is on Easter Day, um, when we get to that point. Good Friday, as someone once said to me, Good Friday, I, I hate going to church on Good Friday because it's always like a funeral. Mm. Well, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we need to come to terms with that. But the hope comes with resurrection, uh, that there's new life, that we don't have to be left in the, the mess of Good Friday and that we, in fact, can rejoice in God's presence that transforms us mm. and, and, and brings us, as I was describing, back into the garden again, that we can, in fact, engage in a life of peace and hope 
because of God's presence, God's spirit that, uh, that comes and dwells among us. I mean, Campolo talks about Sunday being on the way, doesn't he? That something's yes. coming even in the midst of where you are. So there is a sense in which Good Friday and Easter Day have within them uh, this, this anticipation and this... And you can't really celebrate Easter Day even without turning out your shoulders on what actually happened as well. In indeed. It, it, it only makes sense in the light of Good Friday. Mm. Uh, but our, our first service on Easter Day starts in darkness. It's at five o'clock in the morning and we come into this darkened church with a single candle held aloft. And we say, behold the light of Christ. And everyone has their own candles and they light it off this one candle, the Paschal candle. And we all process into church. And so we go from darkness into light. But mm -hmm. the light comes because everyone participates with their own candle bringing light into the world. Symbolic, obviously, of our mission as the people of God. Andrew, lovely to talk to you and particularly important on this great day, a busy day for all of us, but a wonderful day too, as we think of God's love and sacrifice for all of us. Thank you, Andrew, for sharing with us. We'll be back in just a short while. It's been 200 years since the first Methodists met in Australia. To celebrate two centuries of faith and pioneering care, CEO and presenter Reverend Dr Keith Garner takes us back to where it all began. But we don't begin here at the heart of London. We begin in a town in the north of England. In this fascinating narrative, Reverend Garner chronicles the history of the life and times of the founder of Methodism, John Wesley. This fresh and thought-provoking documentary takes us on a journey throughout the United Kingdom, beginning in John Wesley's hometown of Epworth. John Wesley was born here on the 17th of June, 1703. This one-hour DVD travels on to his education years and beginnings of social justice in Oxford, to his final years in London. For more information on John Wesley, the man and his mission, Call 02-9263-5555 or email us at impacttv at wesleymission.org.au. At the heart of Wesley Mission is this desire to honour God, to serve people and to build hope. Greg's story is a wonderful example of how all those things come together and how Wesley Mission's Edward Eager Lodge is helping people to regain their lives. Let's take a look together. Well, I was born in Wentworthville, New South Wales, in uh, 1959. And as I grew up, my dad ended up going out to war. But when he came home, my childhood was a bit abusive because dad suffered the Agent Orange disease. And um, it just affected his mind, and he used to abuse us children a bit and um, take it out on mum a bit also and end up becoming an alcoholic. I think it came to the age I was still attending high school and I was about 15. I picked up a paper and uh, seen there was a job for a spray painter's assistant working in a panel shop. So I went and applied for it and um, ended up working there for seven years and um, virtually given mum probably 75% of my wages just to feed the family. I thought, well, it's time to get out on my own and all that and uh, make a life for myself. And I met a young woman Stayed together six, six or five years ago. And, um, I'd come home from work one day and uh, found her with another man. Basically, I found myself living on the streets and just full of anger. I just wandered the streets for a few days, living on the railway station. And then after a while, I'd um, bumped into a couple of young men that uh, went to a Presbyterian church up at Blacksland. And they invited me along to the church. And um, we went out one weekend, went bush, bush rock climbing, and um, I come across a cave. And without anybody knowing back to it, I went back to that cave and made a home there to sleep in it. Because I felt sleeping on railway stations in the middle of winter was getting a bit cold, and I just needed somewhere with a bit more shelter. I just. Had enough after two and a half years living in a cave, I just said, woke up one day and I just said, God, there's got to be a better life to this, show me it. And it was just like as if he was my father. 
as if he, it was like something was holding my hand and just leading me along the path and put me on the train and brought me here to Edward Eagle Lodge and I spoke to the pastor here, Don Walker. Greg was going through a difficult time with his uh, family and his wife. Uh, there was a difficult times between them, but he wanted to restore the relationships. And I worked with Greg or talked with Greg and listened to Greg for often about the, the various pressures he had on his life and uh, particularly coming from the family. And he was estranged from some parts of his family too. And he wanted to restore that relationship, particularly with his children. Still, I have a few problems today that I try to help and Don helps me through. It was good to see Greg with, with the load being lifted off him. I have um, a stable roof over my head. I have friends that uh, care for me. But most of all, I find that I'm at peace in heart. Today on Good Friday, I want to read to you a more extended passage than normally from John 19, 28 to 37. In many traditions in the world, on Good Friday, there are not big sermons, just a reading of the Passion account. So I thought I'd simply read from John's Gospel and make four brief, but I hope pertinent comments. So we read. Later, knowing that everything now had been finished, and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge on a stalk of hyssop and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he'd received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Now, it's the day of preparation and the next day was to be a special Sabbath. Because the Jewish leaders didn't want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath, they asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus and then those of the other. But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. The man who saw it has given testimony, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth, and he testifies so that you may also believe. These things happened so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And as another scripture says, they will look on the one they have pierced. It's important for all of us to recognize that Jesus is no mere victim of circumstances. There is a danger when you read the whole of the Passion narrative of becoming conscious that various events happen, things occur, but that, that really it's not events that happen and things that occur, but there's a bigger picture. We often say that, don't we? We talk about, let's look at the bigger picture. And the bigger picture here is such an important one. As, as Andrew just a few minutes ago uh, reminded us, that the truth is that Good Friday gives way to Easter Day. So it becomes part of a larger story. And Easter Day helps us to look over our shoulders to the sufferings of Jesus and that journey all through what we call Holy Week. So that today, on this day, on Good Friday, we recognize that Jesus certainly is part of something bigger. We read, later knowing that everything now had been finished and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I'm thirsty. So it's part of that whole story. And the sufferings and death of Jesus show his power and glory. If you talk to many Christians and you were to say to them, what really shows his power and glory? You'd have a number of answers, but I suspect some would say, oh, it's Easter day when we see that empty tomb. And surely in the midst of the glorious resurrection of Jesus, that is true. But not only that, because we see in the way he gives up his life, he isn't murdered, he gives up his life. 
as he is crucified, as he offers his love to those around, to the disciples that were there, and to those he showed compassion on, those that were dying with him. We see his power and his glory at work. Jesus has certainly been a nuisance to the religious leaders of the day. There is no question about that. that that's why they, they wanted to make sure that the, the legs were broken. And, but when they got to Jesus, he was already dead. They didn't need to do that. That's why when it comes to uh, having things moved along, they wanted it all out of the way. They had their special celebration and they didn't want it messed about with all the things that related to what we now know as Good Friday. But it causes an offence to them. But his death is an offence to all of us in one sense, because here we have good being rejected. Here we have love being denied. Here we have the, the, the greatest of all impacts upon the world. And yet at the same time, we have it pushed aside and rushed through so that we can get on with things. And the impact of the death of Jesus upon John was so real. In fact, if it is John, the apostle, that writes the gospel, and the chances are that that is the case, he talks about this testimony being true, that he's seen it, that it's real for him. And when you uh, had been at such an event as, as that, it must have made a deep imprint upon your life. And he talks about telling out this story so that you may believe. This is very much a, a Johannine kind of theme because we read at the end of chapter 20 that there is a sense in which this gospel has been shared with us so that we might believe. And so on this Good Friday, I pray and trust that we might believe afresh that we may observe Jesus Christ living and dying for us and put our trust and our hope in our Saviour and our Lord. If you would like to know more about today's topic or for more on Keith's message, contact Keith by writing to Wesley Mission, Post Office Box A5555, Sydney South 1235 or email impacttv at wesleymission.org.au. Many thanks for joining us on this very special day. We leave you with Shanti Batsky singing, Your Grace Still Amazes Me. We hope you'll join us for our Easter celebrations at the Sydney Opera House this Sunday, and we rejoice in the resurrection of our Saviour and our Lord Jesus Christ. For further details on our website, but until next time, goodbye and God bless you. Tender mercy.